staff members who are joining us via Zoom and is also being recorded. How is that? Is your hear okay? All right. All right, thank you, everybody. So welcome, everyone. Uh, is everyone going to grab a seat? John, is there room? This should be room for you. We good? Okay. All right. So thank you all for coming. Again, it's so nice to have meetings in person to see people. And I was told we can remove our masks. We are all vaccinated. Mm -hmm. uh, so. As soon as I heard that, like, coming off, I've been at work all day. A little exhausting that it was to say. So, um, you're good to go, Jeremy? Good? Okay, perfect, perfect. So, yeah, so welcome everybody. Does everyone have a copy? I want you to have a copy of the agenda. There are more copies over on the table. If you do not have a copy, thank you, Jeremy. He's going to bring them around. All right. So, just have a few uh, opening remarks because I'm going to get to the copy of the agenda. Perfect. We meet everybody on Zoom. All right, so um, I just actually, I don't know if the Zoom members have it, so I just, I'll have my report, we'll have a guest speaker, we're going to have our board nominations, um, then another guest speaker, and then our committee reports, okay? And again, this is being live streamed and recorded, right? Just so I want to let everyone know. So many, many thanks to our industry partners uh, committee for um, helping get this space, especially Bob. Bob, oh, sorry. In um, our video so well. So um, it's really great to be here at the uh, Low Manhattan headquarters here at the Downtown Alliance. Uh, many thanks to Darius Siegel, director of LM HQ of the Alliance for Downtown New York, and Jihad Johansson um, for being our meetings and events coordinator. So uh, it's really we appreciate it. Getting these venues is always a little difficult because there's a little bit of touch and go. So uh, thank you everyone who works so hard on that. So a couple of things. Well, first of all, it's just great to see people working. I've seen people going on over the road tours. I've seen people with school groups. I've seen school groups at work. I've seen the groups coming through the memorial, coming upstairs. So it looks like business is picking up, hopefully. And so we'll keep going. And hopefully once, especially once the EU opens up, uh, is open up to come here, that will really help kick things up a little bit more. Um, so really, it's great to see that. Keep showing and sharing the good news. Now, a couple of announcements. Uh, the NFTGA, the National Federation of the Forest Guides Association, they uh, were going to have their meeting in San Antonio, the biannual uh, NFTGA meeting. That has been um, postponed until next year. Okay, they felt that bringing everybody down to um, San Antonio um, was not really going to work uh, given their uh, COVID conditions right now and so they decided to postpone it. There will be a, uh, a virtual meeting so the NFTGA board will be meeting and they already lined up a great keynote speaker Rick Steves will be speaking and so that will be something we can all um, tune into and do it and be done virtually and so we'll be able to enjoy that and uh, the NFTGA will also take care of their business including electing a new board, a new uh, board of officers for the NFTGA are uh, Michael Dillinger, who's currently vice president of NFTGA, is running as president. And so again, yeah, we'll send in all the paperwork to endorse him as our as a candidate. And so we'll be voting on that, and then we'll have a new board by January. This is for the NFTGA. Now, um, WFTGA, the World Federation of Forest Guides Association, they are moving forward with their biannual meeting. And that is going to be in Novi Sad in Serbia. And that's going to be in February, February 6th through the 14th. And so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to, just as we've done all the other years past, we will help provide a stipend to those GANIC members who wish to attend WFTGA. So if you want to attend WFTGA, please let us know um, no later than Wednesday, November 3rd. That's our next monthly meeting. All right. So the stipend, well, usually it's a fixed amount. We haven't set the amount yet. We haven't set money aside in the budget for it, but we don't have the exact figure yet. Um, but it will likely, it usually covers the registration, which um, includes the cost of the conference hotel. 
All right, so if you're doing the pre-conference um, and the post-conference um, sections, those are, you'd have to cover that cost. This would just be for the main days of the conference. And of course, you'll also need to cover your airfare. All right, so if you are thinking about that, there, is, there are a lot of links on our Facebook page, but also if you just go to the WFTGA website, okay, WFTGA.org, you'll find the links to the conference. All right, you get all the information about Novi Sad, about their travel um, restrictions and requirements. Um, you know, and this is something Gannick is happy to uh, sponsor, but you are also assuming all of the risks inherent with international travel especially now in times of COVID. So we don't assume any um, liability um, for any health issues or anything that should come up like that. But we do you know, encourage you if you're interested in traveling, if you're in interested in attending the conference, which is always very, very good, we do encourage you to let us know. So please email the board. So it's board at gannick.org. And the subject line should be WFTGA. 2022 stipend. We're going to send out an email blast with all the um, this information and a little more detail about that. But again, by the November meeting, please email us, email the board, boardorganic.org, whether you would like to attend or not. So that will be um, in February 2022, no in Serbia. Okay, so we're also tonight, um, we're going to have our speakers, but tonight is also when we take nominations for the board, all right? And we'll have that explained in greater detail in just a, few, uh, just a moment. But um, I really want to encourage you, if you're interested in doing more for Gannick, um, run for the board. You know, why not? We're, we're a fun bunch. <laughs> we sit in that little tiny work. I think it's freezing cold in there because it always blasts in the AC. Um, we have snacks. Jeremy usually brings some really mysterious sugary snacks. And then we hash out organic business. And it's a lot of fun. And I can say that the board is just amazing, absolutely amazing. And so it's just, it's a privilege to work with. I do all the talking, but they do, you know, 99% of the work. They really they do so much. So it's a great thing to do. So if you're interested, throw your hat in the ring, run for the board. If you're not up to run for the board, especially I see some um, provisional members who are here, some new faces, join a committee. All right, there's always something to be done. And you always see the same people running, you know, things, doing the committees because, you know, they want to put a lot into it and you get what you put into it. So keep that in mind. So um, please consider um, running for the board and you'll have right through to the November meeting to be nominated. All right, that's not just tonight, but it will be uh, for the rest of the, uh, the month, right until the November meeting that you can, um, you can nominate yourself. All right, or you can nominate friends or people, um, colleagues that you feel would be uh, would be a good fit for for the board. Okay, so that's really all I have to say. Um, again, we'll uh, we're just going to move on with our speakers, and then I hope you have the agenda. You can see that. And if there's any new business or questions or anything, we'll we'll take that of course at the end of the meeting. So right now, I'd like to introduce Jared Grimm, who's director of research for the Downtown Alliance, and Bob Belt Gelbers. Come up and do a proper introduction. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank the Alliance for New York and the Lower Manhattan headquarters for hosting us tonight. Uh, it was not easy finding a space for October. Most places are really not open yet. And uh, my wife actually found this place by Googling event venues in Lower Manhattan. And we've lived down here for 41 years. And when I got up here, I actually recognized the space, Open House New York used it for an event. So I'm pleased to uh, welcome Jared Grimm, who is the Senior Director of Research at the Alliance for Downtown New York, who tracks all aspects of real estate in Lower Manhattan for over eight years. Prior to relocating to New York, he worked for Teach for America, in New Orleans, he has a master's in city planning from Rutgers University and a bachelor's from Penn State University. So please welcome Jared. Thank you, Bob. Hello, everybody. Hello. Have you used this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. 
Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Jared. Um, I've been in the Alliance for eight years. Uh, the, who's familiar with the Downtown Alliance or, or, or what a bid is? Enjoy the room. No, okay. Uh, so the, the Downtown Alliance started in 1995. We, we were a, um, an afterthought to the Downtown Alliance Association. We started in 1958 uh, by David Rock. Thank you. By, by David Rockefeller started an organization in 1958. Um, at that time, the downtown office market was really changing rapidly. A lot of business was moving to Midtown, um, and there was, a, there was a need to revitalize the neighborhood in the, in the early 60s. So the Downtown Alliance was uh, an actual of that. It started in 1995. Uh, we are the largest business improvement district in North America. We cover roughly 90 million square feet of office space. Our borders are roughly everything south of Chandler Street. So, Rivers River, Hudson East River, um, well, Trade Center, Financial District, Seaboard, that kind of all encompasses our geography. Uh, the neighborhood now has around 64,000 residents living south of Chamber Street. Uh, around 9 11, it was around 15,000. That was spurred by a lot of conversions of the historic office properties, particularly along Wall Street. Um, those were kind of too dated, didn't really serve a modern day office purpose, converted to apartments and condos. That has kind of really driven our residential market. Um, and the, the office market has changed dramatically too. Uh, primarily known as home of Wall Street, financial services, and government. Uh, over the past 10 years, neighborhoods shifted dramatically too. Uh, we've seen a huge number of technology, advertising, media information tenants, as well as a number of professional services firms too. Take up office space in the neighborhood. Um, uh, over the Trade Center campus, uh, some of the largest office tenants are now Condé Nast, Spotify, music streaming service, uh, Group M, a large advertising conglomerate, and Uber are some of the largest tenants of the World Trade Center right now. Um, hotel development has accelerated a lot over the past years. I mean, obviously, 2020 just kind of want to put that behind us. Uh, but um, we have around 36 hotels in the neighborhood, just shy of 7,700. Um, ranging the gamut from your budget, limited service, to full service luxury. Uh, the Four Seasons and Beekman Hotel and Conrad Hotel are some of our, our main brand higher end properties, but we have uh, a handful of Hampton Inns, a handful of Hall Holiday Inns, a number of them that serve a wide range of tourists. Um, in 2019, we had around 14 million unique visitors come to Lower Manhattan over the course of the year. Um, we are a neighborhood that has your, your bucket list tourist you know, Statue of Liberty, uh, the parts here, 9 11 Memorial, our two of our biggest, uh, as well as the uh, Museum of the American Indian and that near Baltimore. But we have uh, quite a, a large range of smaller museums uh, the Skyscraper Museum, Museum of Jews Heritage. Are all kind of like tucked away in little corners of the neighborhood too. And not to mention too, there are also a number of places that aren't necessarily museums, but they're historic sites and places people like to go to and just kind of walk around. You know, if you, like the Wall Street Corridor doesn't have a museum per se, people like love to really kind of walk the cobblestone streets of the neighborhood. Um, so I was hoping just to make this a, a very fluid conversation, you know, just Ask me questions about what's happening in the neighborhood, where I see things might be going. I'm um, happy to spitball with you. Uh, I kind of gave you a view of the neighborhood, but being tour guides, you know, I'm sure you're, you're well aware of the neighborhood itself already. Um, feel free just to raise your hand. I'll, I'll ask a question in the back. There's a museum that I miss terribly. I'm wondering if there's any discussion going on about it being revived. And that is the police museum, which was so heavily managed uh, during Sandy and had a temporary home for a while on Wall Street. But what, what has to come of it and will we ever see it again? Wow. Um, <laughs> I wish I had an answer for that, but, but, but you are right that the museum was shuttered on, on Olsen after Hurricane Sandy. It took a temporary space on Wall Street. Um, the, the challenge that a lot of smaller museums have is it's by become just financially viable. I know, uh, and the, the space they had on Wall Street was, you know, I, it was a temporary hold for that space too, but um, I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, I don't have the answer. Um, I will, by the way, leave my card 
here afterwards. So feel free to shoot me a note and I can forward on to the right person as well. The Yankees have? Yeah, thank you. Um, this is the time to match with all the students for this question. Is there a list? Now keep in mind your practical tour guides, tour managers. Uh -huh. Is there a list anywhere? Maybe not your organization, maybe it is their tenor lines, maybe NYC. How do I find out when or if someone tells a local? I have that list. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the great thing is all the stuff that we collect is for free. Um, a lot of it is on our website, but if there are unique data points you might need, I'd be happy to provide those to you. Um, so of the 36 hotels that are open in the neighborhood, about five are still temporarily closed. Um, that is, it, it has definitely ticked up a lot. There were about six or seven hotel closures um, during COVID, but a number of them have they've either been rebranded as another hotel, would be converted to residential, um, things of that nature. So it, it's definitely a churning process, but I think that that's the way it should be in that Right in front. How can you get more public uh, restrooms open, like at the Fulton Center and the Oculus? Because yeah. the trains are running 24 hours a day, and to have people feel welcoming, you know, trying to get them walk in New York or have dinner in the neighborhood and then go out somewhere. They're closed. It's I will agree with you on, <laughs> on the challenge of that. My, myself, I have the challenge. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, it's a very, uh, it's an ongoing discussion with the MTA and the Port Authority. These are our tax dollars. We, we built this. We, I mean, there's an issue here where somebody's got to put some pressure on it from the tourism sector standpoint. Sure. I will pass the note on to our president, Justin Lavin, and walk and deals with those matters. The red time? Is there any action with your head? Last I heard, no, there is not. Um, the, the, so Pure is a large um, restaurant venue. Uh, to the men, I'm sure you're familiar with the tour guys from there. Um, the, 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 the restaurant had difficulty, you know, it's a large foreign restaurant that really caters on a lot of office, a lot of tours in particular. They, they had a they had a good office you know happy hour scene for a while, um, but definitely was very se seasonal. You know, it's it's kind of a trek to go down in the winter. Um, the, the they still hold on, they still hold a lease with the the Poor Caucus Group that runs PRA, but that's a discussion with Battlebrook City Authority, who actually owns the building there too. Mm -hmm. So currently, the vacancy in Lower Manhattan is around twenty six percent right now, which is which is pretty high. Um, just for comparison, after the two thousand nine recession, it was around in the low thirties in this neighborhood. Um, so definitely lower. It's definitely ticking down. It was at its high point uh, in the end twenty twenty. Um, there is a number of leasing activity happening um, that kind of is like taking that absorption rate better for the neighborhood. Um, slowly getting better, but I think the challenge now is getting people back into the offices, uh, convincing them that they should come in and not stay home the entire time. Uh, so until that time, you know, a lot of countries still kind of weigh their options. They put, uh, you know, they're also for sublease, and they're shipping around to we come in two or three days a week, five days a week. I think that the challenge is once people got a taste of working from home five days a week, it's, it's going to be a, a long slog back to your typical five day work week. Yeah. So I take the Staten Island Ferry two or three times a week. Uh -huh. and, and I always see the tourists get on, and like there's no instruction that says, if you want to see the Statue of Liberty, it's on the right side of the boat. And this might be something maybe for DOT, but there's zero tourist information. Every tourist in New York goes and takes a Staten Island Ferry, and there's yes. zero tourist information in the terminal. Is there any kind of plan for an alliance between you guys and DOT to communicate? That's a great idea. Um, because having you know been on the boat myself, you know, not knowing where to go, um, I will say that uh, I'll pass it on to Jessica, our president. I, I'm just, it makes sense that the MTA would put sign. You know, it it's not MTA though; board. it's DOT. DOT, yes, excuse me, DOT, you're right. Um, I often talk to, I get like the trans members in DOT frequently, so I'll, I'll put it in, in 
I mean, I just feel sorry for these people because I always sit on the Brooklyn side and they all sit down and they're like, oh, and I know they're not going to see me the Statue of Liberty from the Brooklyn side. So. <laughs> and I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's you know, the, the child's sat on a ferry, so when people get on a ferry, you know, they get off Staten Island, they have to come right back again. So I, so I think that that's a conversation we should have with the, the Outlet Mall over there as well. So they're trying to draw in more tourists from Manhattan on the ferry too. So that's a great idea. In the back. Is there any news on the reopening of the atrium at 16 Wall Street? <laughs> I feel like I'm being grilled, but <laughs> uh, so as far as having walked past it several times, you're able to pass through the atrium. You can't sit down right now. So the, the building was entirely occupied by Deutsche Bank. They uh, they are moving their entire operations up to Columbus Circle. The building's going to go through a three-year full renovation, got renovation, uh, which includes altering the atrium, uh, adding in all kinds of stuff there. Um, if you go to, I think it's 60 Wall Street, strt.com, you can see the renderings of what it will look like. Right, but the, the building, as far as I know, is, is empty right now. Um, Deutsche is officially up in Columbus Circle, so they're still going to start that process. And most likely, the atrium will be closed for the next couple of years at least. There are bad news. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. The new organization that runs through the corporations. We are. We are. Um, What's that? It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a unique job that the Alliance has kind of like taken under to, to oversee this. Um, you know, it's not really up to us to like choose a new ticker tape parade. It's often comes uh, like the mayor's idea to organize it. Um, what we do is we help facilitate connections to property owners and shredding of paper and dropping off the paper bag. Um, Me personally, I'm at home at night shredding paper. <laughs> no, there's um, there's a it's, it's just newsprint, um, and we have a contract with like a, like a paper company um, that just, we have them out at the ready, you know, for things of this nature. Um, and they just put them in like our downtown lines trash bags and we drop them off, you know, at, at every, like we just literally give them trash essentially, you know, so they're out, those are out the window. Um, and it's up to the individual building owners to then divvy out to all their office tenants. Um, but, 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 but the Alliance also too, you know, is in charge of all the cleaning. In, in with the DSNY does all the cleaning. It's pretty impressive. We did have the street entirely clean in like less than 30 minutes <laughs> after that ticker tip parade. The question was the, the downtown line shuttle. It's it's back. Yeah, it's back. Yeah, the, 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 the shuttle never stopped. Correct. Yeah, it was. It might have stopped like a, a you know initial month in March 2020, but it's but it, it's it's been running. You know, for those unfamiliar, it's, it's our free shuttle. It runs along Water Street, goes through Battery Park, up through Battery Park City, and makes a giant U uh, around the neighborhood, uh, free of charge. Hop on, hop off. Um, yeah, it's back. Yeah. It's open too. Yeah, I know a couple of years ago the, the memorial was undergoing like a reconstruction process. Yeah, the audio is definitely not on, but every time I've gone by, the back door has been closed, and then I can see from up on the observer, nobody's in it. Like, we usually we get to see people. Cool. Good. Also, I think mean, now that we're just talking about things opening and closing, um, there's a unique thing that's opening up maybe by the end of the year, early next year, um, at 49 Chamber Street, uh, the, the old immigrant savings bank. Um, it's like an old bank lobby, what would you imagine might be a Tripurani level type event space. Uh, the owner partnered with a group called Culture Spaces. It's a region-based um, kind of digital art 
um, installation. You know all those those um those those Van Gogh exhibits that are kind of everywhere around New York now. Uh, it's like that, but like permanent. Uh, it's like a, it's a permanent fixture. Um, they are very much looking to be a part of the neighborhood, not just kind of just come in, come out, and you know charge top dollar. But um, that'll be another facet of the neighborhood too for attractions to take people to. <laughs> I assume so. I assume so. Yeah. yeah, I think that, I mean, I'm sure you get the, this is, the Starbucks is renovated if you want to hit the Brooklyn Bridge too. Is that bathroom open? Yeah, the, the I will need to do some research on what actually exists. You know, it's, where do you guys go who are security? Yeah. We have a private space. I think I think a lot of our downtown alliance guards that walk the neighborhood often use the one in the World Trade Center in Oculus, the, the restrooms in there. But they're closed at seven o'clock. They all close at seven o'clock. You can go over to Brookfield Place, but that's not exactly the meeting. No, that's I mean, if they're coming in on the tenth and on those trains, there has to be facilities that are open. Sure, they don't open till eleven. They're open earlier than other Friday. Yeah, I think <laughs> this is a big concern. Obviously, it sounds, <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 you know, between you know what what staffing is like and, and where people you know who's actually going to be back in the offices who's going to be back shopping you know like traffic is not back to where it, you know, while you want you walk the streets it feels busier but there's right now only about twenty five percent of office workers are back in their offices and all that um, about twenty five percent a lot of empty restrooms we could be in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that would be a, like, yeah. not having a lot of I, 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 I was reading stuff in the press recently about how it's, it's becoming more of a concerted effort to, to make it among the city council to put more public restrooms around the city. So only about 25% of New York City office workers are back in the office. <laughs> It's 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 down it's it's it's, a, it's across it's it's comparable downtown to midtown. I say the neighborhood's worst off uh, is in uh, Flatiron, Madison Square Park. That's about maybe eighteen percent back in the office. It really it really varies uh, based on what industry you work in. The banks, the government are the the white shoe law firms are the ones who are back full steam. Um, but a lot of the neighborhoods where there's a heavy technology and creative service. Kind of the tenant that they're more loose on their return to work policies. So in like those areas in Chelsea and Flatiron that have a lot of those tech tenants in there, they're the ones that have not returned back yet. We but we, we were hoping for a while that Labor Day would be like a point when companies would say come back to the office, come back at least in some form or fashion. Um, but Labor Day kind of coincided with you know Delta variant raging down south um, and just kind of made a lot of companies skittish. So as far as I've been tracking, a lot of companies are saying we're going to do it early 2022. People actually start getting people ready to come back to the office. Do you know how big of an impact that had on restaurants? Yeah, it's just, it's huge. Yeah, yeah. They, they, we, 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 surprisingly, you know, so in, in this neighborhood alone, 12% of retail businesses closed permanently uh, during the past year and a half or so. Um, we, we honestly thought it was going to be a lot worse uh, because this neighborhood is very office dependent and very tourist independent. So there's a lot of transient people coming in and out of the neighborhood frequently. And, and retailers that you know, entirely, their whole business model is on serving a lunch rush, a coffee rush, things of that nature. Um, so th there were a lot of closures, um, but things are, there are people filling out those vacant spaces too. And slowly but surely, things are kind of starting to come back and new leads to being signed. Do you know if there's any indication that like price per square foot asking is going down because of that, or is that still been steady? In terms of retail rents? Retail rents. The, the rents are going down. Um, 
this neighborhood was by one of the cheaper neighborhoods to, to rent retail space compared to the other similar commercial office neighborhoods across the city. Um, and a lot of landlords have been very flexible, uh, you know, with, with, you know, giving incentives, three months rent, um, offering TI tenant improvements, you know, like they'll build, they'll build out your whole kitchen for you, you know, if you're a restaurant. And a lot of, a lot of landlords don't want to lose their retail tenants right now. So they just might not be charging them rent, you know, since COVID started just to keep the space active and vacant because they'd rather have somebody there and have them vacate and try to buy a whole new tenant. But even to this, you know, the, like Starbucks, for instance, is like it's really coming back on their on their number of retail stores. I think Starbucks found that they were kind of cannibalizing their own business. There were too many Starbucks, especially in this neighborhood, and they're, they're even piling now where they're just mobile order pickup only. You can't even walk into the store anymore. Yeah, here's the most important question: Like, have any bars open yet? <laughs> <laughs> I should know this is the one you want to write after this. Um, <laughs> uh, a new, a new uh, line of Thomas Bar up on Stone Street. Uh, that's good. Um, cool bar. You know, I think uh, I mean, one of the spots. Uh, I mean, so it's tough. You know, I used to be out here all the time. Like, I guess we have coming out two days a week now. You know, I, I live in Brooklyn, so I'm mostly in Brooklyn these days, just hanging out. But um, but there are definitely bars. I know that across the street, uh, Trinity Place, uh, right across from Zuccotti Park, they just reopened in September 1. So there, you know, even the bars that were here are kind of fully back in business now. Yep. Do you have extra other toy bags like we are connected with different or subscribe to so many Yeah. Have anything like that? We do, we do. So we we have, we have a lot of different types of newsletters. We have a, we have a generic newsletter that's kind of advertised new openings, events happening in the neighborhood. That goes out about once or twice a week, typically. Um, I think I've mailed this around 20,000, 30,000 people on that list. Um, I myself send out research related real estate emails every quarter, every month, things of that nature. Um, and also, so my my tourism colleague who handles um, all types of tourism and hospitality related efforts, she can't be here tonight, but she has a dedicated list where she's always connecting hotels and, and tour groups and, and all types of things like that, you know, um, of that nature. So whenever there are things happening, that'd be a good venue for you to connect with. Um, website, website, website. Yeah, so it's so yeah, it's it's on our so, so all of my research data is on there. As well as the hotel data um, for connections with, like, you know, the one on one kind of. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Thank you all, and welcome to our space. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. I'm sure people also. Be in touch. So thank you, Jared. I'll also, my my business card on the lobby. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Okay. That's so interesting. I love hearing all the the details and all the the stats. Um, I just have to say one thing, Jared. You did mention a really nice attraction here that I kind of know. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> I work at the One World Observatory, so ah, got to get us in there too. Yes. It's, yeah, it's kind of, it's tall. <laughs> That's about it. That's what we do. We have nice people visit, you know, you know nice couples um, every so often. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jared. So now we're going to get to our board uh, nominations. So um, it's Susan is going to. Well, I'm going to try. My, my phone is kind of. Um, I'm going to go. I'll go up. Okay. All right. All right. All right, so Patrick's going to give the, the rules of the road, and then we'll start the fun. I'll grab just has a link. All right. And just in the interest of full transparency, I am currently the secretary of the Guys Association of New York, and I am available to uh, run again for office in the coming term. So I will not be serving on the election committee that is made up of Susan Birnbaum, Bob Gelber, Deborah Blanc. 
these three people will be in charge of the elections. So just to get us started, there are nine board positions to be filled. President, two vice presidents, one treasurer, two secretaries, three members at large. Terms of office, two years. Board members do accept a commitment of attending at least eight board, eight membership meetings and 10 board meetings per year. Now, all full members of uh, uh, can, uh, can run for office. Now, a, a, uh, every full member with standing can run for office. With standing is determined by Robert's Rules of Order. Your dues are fully paid. And additionally, you are not currently under any suspension through the ethics committee. So, clean record, memory good standing, you can certainly run. Nominations are made from the floor. Nominations must be seconded to be considered. Nominations and seconds can continue through the month of October via the election committee email. So, election at gannick.org. Elections committee has its own dedicated email for nominations that can happen between today and our November meeting, election at gannick.org. Candidates may run for more than one office, but you can only serve in one office. Keep that in mind as you may or may not accept nominations. Nominees must accept or decide their nomination 24 hours prior to the November meeting. Candidate statements may be heard at the November meeting. Accept the nomination. We're expected to speak at the November meeting. Convince us all why you should be on the board. Candidates unable to attend that meeting may have their statement read aloud by another member of GAN. You can then post your statements on the discussion page of the GAN website. At the November meeting, members can may question the candidates as to their positions and specific issues they want to bring up. So candidates are expected to be at November meeting to in fact greet their constituents. Now, as announced at our September AGM meeting this year, our elections will be held electronically. There'll be no more paper ballots. As someone who has stuck paper ballots <laughs> and your damn candidate statements into little envelopes. I'm so glad that's over. Thank you. Uh, after the November meeting, a ballot will go out. It's really simple. You got the ballot, you click, you send it back. Obviously, in the electronic world, those numbers are going to start tabulating the right way. You're not going to know those numbers until December's meeting. The only people who will be able to look at them will be the elections committee. We're all familiar with Royal Apricot. That is our membership services software. A subset is going to be created within Wild Apricot that only the elections committee is going to have access to. So, no one on the board can see how they're doing. You can't see how they're doing. Nothing will be announced until the December meeting. Are there any questions? Question, Bill. So is there a set monthly date for the board meetings? By that I mean it's like the third Wednesday of every month, something along those third lines. Monday, third Monday of the month actually is the regular board meeting. Yes, and yeah. if we don't like the results, then we put the attendance of The Ninja Turtle Election Committee and run it all. Since we're on a hybrid meeting right now and some people are on Zoom, can we make uh, here today, can we make nominations for people who are on Zoom? Is somebody monitoring Zoom? Zoom is being monitored. Jeremy will uh, keep an eye on the chat. Nominations can come in through. Uh, the chat on Zoom. Correct, Jeremy? Correct. Okay, remember, nomination, nomination stands if it's second. Yeah. Could you define what the responsibilities are for the members at large? The simplest and broadest way to describe a member at large is they're sort of the onboard. They are available to the membership at any time. You walk up to a, a member at large, you've got an issue, you've got an idea, you've got a complaint, bring it right to a member at large. And they, in turn, will bring it to the board. That's the simplest, briefest description of a member of the yeah. That's It's really that simple. We really aim for simple. It may look otherwise sometimes, but we really aim for simple. 
Any other questions? Okay, I'm putting my candidate hat on and turning this over to Susan. And Bob, are you coming up or just Susan? Just Susan, all right. Or just another thing to say about the member at large, they also tend to do everything else that everybody else wants to do. And I'm like, why did you do it? So <laughs> that's, that happens too. Yeah. That's that. It's recording. It's recording. Oh, okay. So we open nominations. Susan. Oh, we got one. We got one over here. You can hear me. Right? Hold the rest of your results up. Yeah. Like that. Like that. I think you can hear me without okay, it. Though. We need to put them in court. Okay, that's better, right? Yes. No one ever told me. What was that? Susan, in the first grade. <laughs> okay, Susan. Okay. I would like to nominate as president of the Guides Association of New York, Emma Guest yeah. Gonzalez. So Is there a second? There okay. is a second. Emma, you're the first candidate. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, a, a quick question to Patrick. Can I read Heidi's email now? Yes, of course, go oh, right okay. ahead. All right, so I received an email you, from you, Heidi. Microphone. Yeah, Thank you. I received an email early today from Heidi Benedict. She would like to nominate my fourth role for president. Is there anyone who would like to second the nomination? We have a second. Okay. okay, now we have two candidates. Anybody else want to nominate? I'd like to, do you need the microphone? I'd like to nominate Patrick for continuous secretary. Thank you. A nomination accepted. All right. Okay. Second. Of course it's second. Okay. We're moving along. President. I would like to nominate Kevin Lawrence as vice president. I second that nomination. So, okay. okay. Anybody else? Um, we have two vice presidents. Two vice presidents. I just nominate Jeremy as member at large again. No. Oh, treasurer. Oh, treasurer. I'm sorry, treasurer again. Sorry. <laughs> well, there needs to be a second. Second. No, second. I second. Okay. I accept. You accept. Okay. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. Um, any nominations for any other officers? Patrick? Jonathan Tura, member at large. Second. 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 Discussion. Yes. I'd like to nominate John Semla as secretary. I'll second. second. We have two secretaries, correct? Yes. yes. You can nominate yourself, right? Yeah. Yep. And I'm <laughs> I know he's already been nominated as secretary, but I would also like to nominate Patrick as vice president. Accepted. <laughs> oh, second. Okay. Anybody else for a nomination? Jonathan Turo from VP. Second. Not accepted. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So that was my Okay. Are we have anything on what Zoom? What else? Do we still have vacant? Nothing on Zoom. Nothing on Zoom. Okay. Um, actually, we have one. We have sufficient number of candidates to fill the board. The only contested position would be the president. President. So that, thank you. But then this can continue through, through, through the month. month. So please, if you 
those of you who were on Zoom, I guess, please oh, send yeah. things there, out. There is a question from Adrian Cooper on the Zoom, if it's possible to verbally run down the nominations uh, as of right now. Okay. All right, two candidates for president of Guides Association, Emma Guest Gonzalez and Michael Morgenthal. Candidates for vice president, Kevin Lawrence, Patrick Casey. Secretaries, Patrick Casey, John Semlak. Treasurer, Jeremy Wilcox. Members at large, Jonathan Truer. And McDermott, Beth Gong. Actually, I have to point out that I am up for two positions, so ideally there should be another candidate in there for secretary. Or, or vice president. Switch. Okay, so we'll, we'll see what happens by the end of the month. Thank you. And, and um, keep in mind that uh, it's the email is election. Hmm. Oh, election at gannick.org. Okay, election at gannick.org. So we send your nominations in there. Sorry, guys. Um, so send your nominations into that. So we, you know, ideally we have, um, we need another vice president or another secretary. Patrick can't do both. I mean, he probably could, but that's according to our bylaws. We should. No, no, the nominations are open right through. Right through yeah. Okay, Harvey's nominated Mike Morris, called the vice president. Any second? Second. Second from Jeremy. And so we'll wait and see what Mike said. Perfect. Great, thank you. And then, but don't forget, and people listening on Zoom, and we'll send out an e blast to everybody to let them know how this runs. And so the entire membership, I mean, we've got a very small bunch here today, but you know, anyone, everyone, and think about it too. You know, it's fun. It's a lot of work, but it's fun. I mean, it's fun, right, guys? Please tell me it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. All right, it is fun. All right, so um, now we're going to our next speaker, who is Donna Haynes, who um, will be introduced by Harvey. Thank you. you know, I was impressed with Jared when he was here when he was talking about lower uh, Manhattan and the Lions. Uh, when I started my business career, I was selling Hyperenders and calculators. My first territory was the Fulton Fish Market in Chinatown. Um, most offices open around nine o'clock, except fish market. They're there at two in the morning, and by nine o'clock, they're washing down their stalls and they're gone. They try selling electric typewriters to the people in the fish market. China, <laughs> Chinatown was worse. Imagine trying to sell a, calc sell a calculator to someone who's using knives. <laughs> they beat me every time with finding an answer. But if you think that was challenging, what I've been doing for the attic lately, I think it's equally, if not more challenging. Some of you know that I attend all these industry functions where I go about trying to meet people, make them more effective, become industry partners, or other things related to GANIC, using the space, for example. Well, I met my counterpart in one of these meetings, Donna Haynes. Donna was at a transit, was at transit back when Metro Park was introduced. She managed promotions and advertising to support helping business to get comfortable with using MetroCard on buses and subways and remembers the fun days with FunPass. To Donna, it seems very much like that now as it transitions to only Metro New York, commonly known as OMNY. Donna comes to new, the new MTA away team for 14 years of doing leisure travel at Metro North. And Metro North, for those of you who will find out, is going on a fan trip. Site inspection this week. We thank Donna for all our help in arranging that. Donna, you're hiding somewhere in here. You can run, but you can't hide. She manages partnerships with many of the tourism agencies, organizations, and she values the importance of these alliances for marketing and sharing visitor and customer information. More than ever, working together is essential, and we are looking forward to establishing a strategic affiliation partnership with the MTA in Ghana. You got it? Oh, Hi, um, yes, I'm, I'm Donna Haynes. Um, I'm happy to be here and um, it was great meeting you. We were um, at the uh, event that City Guide had, um, gosh, almost a, a little over a month ago. Um, it was um, at One World. 
Um, it was a beautiful evening, um, an amazing sunset, and the tourism industry was there um, big time. It was um, a really exciting night. Like it really felt like we were all starting over together and that um, we were just like, you know, just feeling um, a great deal of promise with, um, you know, just recovery all in all um, here in New York City and for the region and as a whole. And um, I was happy to be there. It was timely for us because um, MTA has like developed a whole new leisure travel program where we're looking at um, Metro North, the territory for Metro North, which is north of, of the city, um, going to Connecticut and, and to the Hudson Valley. Um, and Long Island Railroad uh, and the subways and buses all coming together for a seamless um, marketing uh, program for, for leisure travel. And, and we feel like it's a really um, timely um, collaboration because, you know, I mean, we may never see commuters come back the way they were, right? And so, you know, our, our, our focus is not only to be here for the visitors that come to New York City, but to also kind of turn the commuters into tourists, um, to get them on the train, get them on the bus for the fun of it. And um, so, so that's, that's one focus. Um, another is um, the introduction of the, the Omni card and the Omni system, which is ultimately going to replace the, the Metro card as, as we know it. And, um, you know, it's, it's contactless. It's got like all of these bells and whistles that um, make for, um, you know, the, the, the type of product that, that commuters and consumers um, can appreciate, you know, everything is, is digital. And so work, oh gosh, have I not been talking loud? Sorry. Uh, so working on um, Omni is, you know, it's a, a contactless thing your credit card, you can keep it in your pocket, you can have your smartphone and you can, you know, use that and, you know, you just like kind of zoom into the, the, um, the subway and on, on the bus. Um, and we're, we're trying to figure out like how that's going to work for tourists. Um, and we feel like partnering with you and um, the other tourism uh, professionals in the city is going to be really important, you know, and as I'm, I'm here today, I feel like one of the things I would really like to, to say is I, I want to know your business and how you do business and, and how you use the system and how you, um, you know, what it is you share with tourists that are, are, are taking your tour. And I, I believe that, you know, from my understanding of, you know, the, you're, you're the, you're like the foot soldiers and you're the front line for, for tourists as they're coming into the city for the first time, they're often taking your tours and you know, you're like their cousin, you know, you're the one that like, you know, tells them like, yeah, it's really easy to take the subway. You see this, and blah, blah, blah. you know, like you're, you're having those kind of conversations with them and getting them confident, you know, with like, okay, so tomorrow, I'm going to take, you know, the one train down to South Ferry, whatever, you know. Um, but, you know, so, so I feel like before I can, can figure out um, what we need to do for you, I need to know what you're doing and, and how you do it and what you say. And, you know, and then I think we can develop, you know, some, you know, FAQs that help you or, um, you know, brochure that helps you or have information on our website that is specific to your needs or just a, a newsletter, any, any number of things. But so that's the kind of conversation that, um, you know, I, I would like to initiate, not that we have to have the discussion now, um, but I'm, I'm leaving my, my uh, business cards and would love to hear from you, would love to connect with you. Um, the MTA Away program, which is what this uh, new umbrella, uh, you know, is, is called, um, MTA away, um, is we've got a new website. Um, the website is, um, mtaaway.com. Um, it's a leisure travel website 
and it's um, made up of inspirational travel articles that you know cover the entire region. Um, and it's a collaboration with um, a lot of um, tourism partners, NYC and Company, Discover Long Island, um, Hudson Valley Happening, which is um, a uh, social influencer. Um, and so like, I, I would love for you to take a look at that website and um, you know, give us some suggestions or stories um, and or you know, just features. You know? um, I was talking to Matt, I believe his name is, and he was telling me about um, the Irish tour, Irish heritage tour that he does. And it sounds so awesome. And that would make such a great feature, you know, on our site, you know, I mean, how many people know that that exists, you know? And that's the sort of thing that I would think that people from the Hudson Valley or Connecticut or Long Island, they could come into the city and do something like that. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times they, they don't necessarily want to do the food tour, but you know, I, I would think that like something like that, you know, would, would definitely connect with them. And I say they don't want to do the food tour, you know, some do, but then some people think that, oh no, I know what restaurant to go to. I know this, I know that. So, but, you know, we, we just really want to be able to, you know, be as diverse as possible and, um, and share that with our, our customers. So um, any, any questions? I, I just like kind of put a lot out. I don't know if you heard anything, sorry. Right. Uh, would the path uh, trains be involved with this as well? Um, the path trains, that would be, um, I guess that's uh, Port Authority, mm -hmm. um, I believe. So that's that's not um, our system. Um, you know, we're, we're talking um, at this point with the, the Omni, it's, um, it's uh, on the buses and subways. And in, I think it's like, 2023 or 2022, they're talking about um, being able to have it on the, the trains, you know, Metro North and Long Island Railroad. But um, with uh, Metro North and Long Island Railroad, they have um, ETIC. So in some ways or another, there's a, a lot of um, balance, you know, with, you know, the products that, that are out there. Donna, when will the Omni system recognize seniors? Um, that's, the, that's one of the markets that they're working on uh, first. It's going to be sometime next year. Sorry. Yeah, sometime next year they'll, they'll be doing that. Oh, sorry. And I'll, I'll do this. Yeah. yeah. Would it be possible to put on your website, the Guides Association website, so that anybody looking at it could say, oh, I would like a tour and be able to just go into our site? I think, I think on our uh, mtaaway.com site, when you take a look at that, um, you'll see um, that it, it offers the, the most opportunity for cross-marketing in that respect. The mta.info site is, is very, you know, it's, it's a public agency. It's, you know, it focuses on um, service information. So it's, it's hard to, to get commercial with it. Um, whereas we're finding with mtaaway.com, you know, through the cross marketing, through the uh, collaboration that we're doing with the content, um, we're able to do that kind of cross marketing. And so, so one thing that comes to mind as as I'm listening to you um, this evening is the idea of maybe each month we could feature a different tour, and it would be. You know, what we're looking for with this site is that that sort of article that uh, makes people, you know, get a sense of what that travel experience is, you know, that first person kind of experience. Um, so, you know, perhaps we could work with, you know, um, you know, the association on a series of articles that are kind of showcasing the various tours that um, are available in New York City. And with that article, at the end of the article, there could be um, a link to your website that, you know, kind of brings them to all of the offerings that um, are available. So I, I think something like that might be um, a good way for us to, to work together. Um, you know, if, if there, if anyone has, um, you know, that, that sort of article already or, you know, a video or something like that, um, you know, we'd certainly love to consider it. 
Yes. So what a lot of us uh, have to work with sometimes are large groups of people, which has always been a challenge, even with the previous system. Like Metro cars, we have to go to specific locations because we can't do group purchases at machines mm -hmm. or at, at the booth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering what, with the new Omni system, how, how will we be a prominent group purchase? You, you know, you know what um, came to mind. I was thinking about it um, the other day because what what just um, what they just began to introduce is an Omni card, which is um, basically like um, a gift card, a Visa gift card. It's that sort of thing, right? And um, I was thinking, you know, if I wonder if there is like a way that um, that you could have those um, and put whatever kind of value you need to on the, the card and you give it to your your um, uh, tour participants at the start of the tour and they have to return it at the end of the tour. So you have what's on there just enough for the tour that you're doing and then they give it back to you. Um, and you know that that kind of comes to mind um, because it because it is a it's, it's like a credit card. It's a plastic card. So it's not one of those things where, and you're reloading it. So, um, you know, that way you don't have to, because, um, you know, there, there's a, a $5 fee with, you know, getting that initial card. And, you know, from what I understand, and, and basically, honestly, I'm, you know, it's MTA. So like the line of communication is, <laughs> is what it is. So I'm reading this just as you are. And so from what I understand, they're trying to figure out like how to get around that $5 fee. Right. You know, they don't want to put that out there, but at this time, that's the way it's set up. And, and part of the, the problem with it, not problem, but it's, it's a third party thing. You know, this is a system that um, is being implemented in other cities by a company, like, you know, a technical company. So Cubic is the name of the company. So it's, it's kind of like when you have like a website designed by somebody and, you know, you become a slave to um, that designer and it's like, I just want to change one thing. And they're like, yeah, that's important. Did you put the easy pass? Um, so, yeah, so there, there is no easy pass. Um, and, and um, you know, they, they will still have a, still have a seven day, um, you know, unlimited card and the 30 day unlimited card. Um, but essentially, you know, this, you know, Omni is going to be, you know, what's up. So. Well, I guess my question is similar and I guess I don't understand about the unlimited rights. For my adult tours, Omni's been great. Mm -hmm. For student tours in particular, mm -hmm. a lot of these students, of course, don't have their own cards and what you know, right. just talking about. Uh, in, in terms of getting these groups through, mm -hmm. I think being able to just very quickly be able to say, I'm having 45 students come through this, this <laughs> turn style right now. Yeah. Um, but the unlimited, can you explain? Is there going to be an option on Omni for weekends? Uh, no. Um, as, as it stands, you know, they, with um, the Omni, <clears throat> if you get to a certain number of um, of trips, it will kind of default to, you know, uh, like, okay, wow, you, you just spent the equivalent of a monthly pass. So, so then at that point, you're, you know, kind of on your own. So, but, you know, that's, that's like, you're, I mean, you're, you don't have to pay. Like, you're, you, you've maxed, you, so you know, maxed out. It'll automatically. Yeah. Out. Yeah. And it's, and that's yeah, it is. It it is um actually, but and it's one of those things where um they won't necessarily necessarily tell the customer that that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's like it's for that new person that's like looking at their bank statement to say like, huh, wait a minute, you know, I swiped you know ten times and like they don't see it um showing up on my bill. Weren't the workers on board if they actually told them that this is. Yeah, you know, it's it's so interesting because, and, and this is one of the reasons why I say um, I, I would love to know your business and what your needs are and, you know, how you function, you know, currently with, you know, the products that exist. Um, 
but it, it, it's like one of those things where everyone is just still figuring out how all of this is going to work and how it's going to impact um, the customers, how it's going to impact tourists, um, and what that messaging needs to be. You know what I mean? Like, you know how like you, you, you have these internal conversations, but then you realize that like um, you, you haven't necessarily looked at things, you know, fully and, and, and thought of all of the small audiences and, and everything that exists. The various audiences, I should say. Yes, Hi, I'm sorry. So thank you for bringing the subway maps. Yes. Um, is there a resource where we can get bolts of the bus maps? Um, yeah, bus actually, maps? yeah. If you if you send me an email, um, I'm like the the guy who gave me those those maps. He's got his cubicle is surrounded by uh, <laughs> <laughs> boxes and boxes of you know bus maps, subway maps. Um, you know, and then there's a warehouse that has them as well. You're not going to see them in the, the system um, these days because they're just, you know, they're trying every, you know, with COVID and protocols and cleaning and, and all sorts of things. It's like there's there's nothing to, to grab and, and, you know, tuck away, you know. So everything is um, digital, but that the product still, the paper, Still exists. And I just want to say, whoever designed the My MTA app, they mm -hmm. did a really good job. Oh, good. Really great app. Oh, wow. That's great. That's, that's good to hear. We, we don't hear a lot of um, positive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank I know, I know. It's it's um it's interesting, and that again, that's that's one of those things where <clears throat> they're trying to they they wanted to um, get rid of money, you know, having any money at the you know at the the I guess say token booths. So dating myself, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, at the at the station booths, but um but at the same time, they're you know they're trying to figure out what services they are going to provide. But and that was that was such a wonderful thing because i used to use that because i would like find myself like wait here's that metro card oh i don't have it so i have to get another one so like and then i look up and i got like three dollars on one and 50 cents on another yeah. and yeah so um so hopefully they they will um bring that back thank you what's the city doing to make sure people feel safer on it that when people are on the subway you've always got one or three one to three people who either don't have a mask at all yeah. or they're not wearing mm -hmm. it. And then the other issue is every single day I'm out now, there are dogs on leashes mm -hmm. and they're yeah. big dogs. They're dogs on leashes, leashes, you said. And they're mm -hmm. in the subway mm -hmm. daily. Right. I know when customers are saying like, he fits in my backpack, I, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's become, you know why it's so crazy. Like everybody got a dog during the pandemic. So now it's like, <laughs> wait, now I'm out and about. So I guess I have to take you with me, you know? <laughs> so, so I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know about the, the dog issue. Um, I do know that um, they are, you know, making every effort. They've got like the mask force out giving out masks. They've got the police officers giving out masks. And you've just got, it's, it becomes one of these things where you've got, it's the way our society is right now. You got some people who think that they eat it and other people that don't. They got people that think that like, you know, it's their right to not wear it, you know, to make their choice. And so you're, you're, you're that ends up becoming the, the battle, but it's, it's not the lack of availability because, you know, I, I mean, I'm out in the subways all the time and I see, I see exactly what you're saying, but then I also see um, you know, police officers that end up being saddled with, you know, having masks in their hands to hand out, then, you know, and, you know, that's not even one of the things that, like, probably, you know, two years ago, they ever thought that they would, um, that would be their, you know, their main purpose, you know, for being in the, in the subway. Um, it's just, we're doing, we're doing as much as we can. Um, there's a, a big, push to um, have like a public information campaign to make customers feel safe, you know, to 
and to get them back on the trains because part of it is perception you know a lot of people think it's oh it's not safe it's not nobody's nobody's traveling this that or other but we know we're out and we see that people are traveling everybody thinks that everybody's home like you, you know like they think that like because they're working from home everybody's working from home but they, they don't realize that people have really started coming back and the city is amazing and you know they need to like jump back in you know so that's the message that we keep trying to relay you know with all different kinds of press events and you know you name it um and so that's why we just feel it's important to work with the tourism partners to, to just you know get that that message out there you know um, you stand up and uh-huh. Is that going to be connected at all to Omni yeah. at some point? Well, is, is the ferry system, the question is, is the ferry system going to be connected with Omni at all? Yeah, um, it depends on what ferry, because there are so many, there are private. Yeah, ferry. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, you know, that's um, uh, DOT um, has has some of those. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it's, how it's going to um, all you know, operate, we're trying to, as it stands right now, um, MTA is trying to just do the rollout and get the Omni system installed in all of the stations. Like, so we're still at that point, because like, you can't really, you know, I mean, you, you can't say that this is, this is the mode of, you know, this is the, the transit fare if all the subways don't have, it, you know, so, so we're still at that point. That's yep. That's the that is the next introduction, and that's going to be um, by January first quarter um, next year. That is on, going to be um, the the first introduction, the reduced fare um, audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to just compliment you on some of the advertising that I've seen around on the MTA way. Oh, good. I'm actually taking screenshots. I'm like, oh, that's, um, I mean, cool. Yes, that looks like a good idea, a good little trip. Good. Um, that was like childbirth, developing that, <laughs> that campaign. I can't even get to tell you. I can't even to tell you, like, you know, cracking your head against this concrete up here. It's just unbelievable. So I'm, I'm actually happy to see it in the, the system too, you know, but sorry, go ahead. It's tickled me a few times. like, oh, that's something like a trip. Yeah. Um, reminds me of like, I love New York when I was a kid. Right. <laughs> that's cool. Um, you know, what you said, I don't know if this is relevant, but you know, you, you put money on your card and if you put $5, you get five fifty. the more money you put on, the little extra you get. Yeah. Since I started using now, I'm like, wait a minute. Now I'm just paying 275, 275. I know, I know. So what's you know, the, you know, so I feel so, like I'm not I'm paying more now. I know I know, I know. Trust me, I know. I you know what? So can I can I be honest? I have not switched over. I'm still doing <laughs> uh, I have that. I have put cards. I know, yeah, I'm I'm serious. Yeah, no, I still do like I still put money on my metro card. I still do that, you know, but where is my, my daughter? She's like, what are you doing? Like, ah, uh, she's just like, you know, she's putting her eye blowing up against it. I'm like, all right, okay, all right, I'll get there, I'll do that. But um I, but with the Omni program, there are supposed to be a lot of perks that come with it. And there's like an app and um, they're going to, you're, you're going to end up having like all kinds of customer benefits that um, come along with it. And, um, and that's in the works, you know, so um, that's, you know, that's supposed to be, I guess, the, you know, the, it's up being the, the benefit in place of that, that discount. Going to work on air train too. Um, that so you're, you're talking about like the air train um, that you get in Jamaica. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that'll probably win by the time it's available um, on Long Island Railroad and Metro North. It'll you know air train as well. You know. So, but if you do need it, several people have said a group of students at the airport doesn't make sense. To do um, you still need a metro card for, for the air train. Right, right, right. 
um, yeah, it's it's going to, you know, like all of these things need to kind of be worked out. Yeah. On, like, what's the benefit? Yeah. This is the human needs to be able to train and do it. Mm -hmm. There's one ticket for the year of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's convenient. So it's one ticket. So, and that's New Jersey Transit. So that would be comparable to Long Island Railroad one ticket. Is that, is that yes. what? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But, but the, the 775 air train fee mm -hmm. is included in their train fee. Right. So, um, I, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know Long Island Railroad system so well. That's what we're learning now that we're like all under this one umbrella. Um, but, but um, I would think that because um, I know with Metro North, there's a, a couple of different. Um, airport packages that you can buy through um, Metro North's ticketing system. So um, perhaps that will be the same thing with Long Island Railroad, the air train, you'll be able to buy it through and, and that would have like some kind of Omni um, pass for it. And you would end up having it on your phone. You know, you wouldn't necessarily have to have it on a card, but you could have it on your phone and, and just buy it that way. Work in progress. Got it. Thank you so much. I just want to say it's so great. And thank you so much, Harvey, because having you here and having you listen and say, oh, I want to work with you guys, you don't hear that a lot from the agency. <laughs> so we're really, really, really. Yeah, they're in the. Bag with okay, them. okay, great. Yeah, because Don, uh, you are about to get bombarded with you, so just to let you know, and you don't stop. So, um, I think, yeah, yes, yes. All right, so Bob has those, we'll put those out. So, thank you very much, and thank you so much, Harvey and Don. It's great. We, I think, we'll probably bring, bring you back. So thank you. All right, perfect, perfect. Okay, so, um, moving right along. Thank All right. You. Thank you again, Donna. Okay, so we're going to go to our committee reports now. Um, all the committee reports are available yeah. online, but our first yeah. will be the awards committee. So, Matt, make your one. Come on up. All righty. Thank you very much. And just for the record, in the interest of full disclosure, I did not get a dog uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so, Awards committee, um, please remember to submit your candidates for the pre-nomination process. Voting is still open for a little bit more than a month. We're going to close it in mid-November when the committee will then determine from your nominations the uh, what the slate of the final four nominees in each of the awards category uh, is going to be. Uh, you are welcome to visit and revisit the pre-nomination page for submitting new candidates as often as you wish. We will resend the link to that again within 24 hours of this meeting. Every category mentioned on the pre-nominations page features a brief description. However, if you have any lingering uncertainties at all, please send an email with questions to awards at A little bit of a sad development uh, that I do need to share with everyone. When you are considering your nominations, I hate to say it, please do not nominate the New York Times. As weird as that sounds, bear with me. Uh, it has come to my attention that within the last year, the Times has instated a new policy that their staff may not participate in any award ceremonies or accept awards from any organizations, including political organizations, businesses, or professional associations, that's us, who, in their words, have a direct interest in the tenor of the newspaper's coverage. Now, personally, I actually suspect that this policy might have been provoked to existence by Corey Kilgannon's win a couple of years ago. I don't know, but that's my suspicion. But the Times can't accept an award from us, so please do not waste your time and effort nominating them because we'll have to, you know, disqualify the nomination because they can't come, they can't the trophy. Um, and uh, we can't, you know, if we have to do the whole, oh, they couldn't be here, but We'll accept the award on their behalf. That's not good for them. So you know, remember, it's image, image, image. A note on the categories. I, I just want to bring this up because of the way the pre have been coming in. The committee worked 
intensely for over a year between its inception and the first gala to come up with categories that would work and make sense year in and year out. They were not just a bunch of half-baked ideas that we thought of staggering home, home drunk one night. You know, we put a huge amount of intensive discussion into these categories. Each year, we always received suggestions on new categories like outstanding new building on the skyline because someone wanted to nominate one Vanderbilt for that. Last year, it was you know, outstanding new attractions so that the edge could be nominated. And there's a reason that we don't do that. You know, we don't want to compromise the award's integrity by nominating inappropriate candidates and in order to scramble to fill a four nomination slot slate uh, in a year when there aren't four new buildings as cool as one Vanderbilt. And at the same time, we don't want to compromise our consistency by simply ignoring a category one year just to bring back, you know, back the next year in a year when there aren't four new attractions like the edge. You know, we're, we've done it the way we've done it very much on purpose. I assure you, these are all ideas we thought of and talked about a lot. Uh, this is precisely the type of issue that the three support awards, you know, were designed to address. You know, outstanding achievement in support of tourism, in support of culture, and in support of preservation. You know, that these issues, that is where those nominees belong. That's what they are for. So if there is something or someone you want to honor and celebrate, and you're not sure which category they should be in, look to the support categories. That's why they exist. And if that still doesn't seem right, and you don't want to leave, you know, the and you know the entity that you wish to honor unnominated. Email me awards at gannic.org and we will figure it out together. We are here to celebrate, you know, these entities that we want to celebrate. We have started working on casting the show. Uh, there's a lot that's still pending and unconfirmed there, but we are hoping by next month uh, to have some very exciting announcements regarding hosts, honorees, presenters, etc. So stay tuned for that. And lastly, uh, please do remember provisional members. This is the one kind of voting you are allowed to do. You know, everyone knows provisional members don't vote. In the awards, you do. So when you get that uh, recent uh, pre noms link in, you know, within the next day, by all means, use it. You can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. So next uh, for Education Bob, it's you or Nina. <clears throat> okay. So um, this is a report prepared by our committee chair, Nina Wende, who is not with us tonight. But she wants to thank the committee, which is myself, Jeremy Wilcox, John Semlet, Kevin Lawrence, Lisa Puccio, Minna Shock, Susan Burnham, and Eileen Rock. So upcoming in-person fans and virtual tours. This Saturday, October 9th, we're going to Bannerman Island in Beacon, New York. Susan and I have worked on that for many, many weeks. And now that we have free tickets on Metro North, we're really ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, it is sold out. We have 24 spaces. We had to book the ferry to Bannerman in advance. And that's it. But 24 is really a good number. Uh, October 12th, we will be celebrating Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month, a virtual tour of Spanish Harlem's murals and mosaics with Lee Hallenby. October 27th is another virtual tour. Um, no, it's not virtual. That's incorrect. Art Deco and the Grand Concourse. With that is virtual. 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 It is virtual? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry about that. Because uh, I thought Tony met me, so he was ready to come out and relax. We had lunch a few weeks ago. <laughs> All right, November 11th, walking tour, the media moguls of Midtown with Ann McDermott. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have an idea for a fan, a PDP, please click on the blue link uh, on, on the website and fill out a form. We welcome all ideas, and uh, you'll find it under documents on the website. Let's see, guest speakers. Uh, guest speakers, we're always looking for guest speakers. It's not always easy to find them. 
Uh, tonight we were really very lucky because Donna was more than willing to jump in immediately and then Jared Grimm came from the Alliance. If you have any ideas, please educationorganic.org. And if you would love to join the education committee, we welcome you. Our next virtual core committee meeting is Tuesday, October 19th at 6 p.m. And again, remember educationorganic.org. Um, let's see, thank you to contributors of last month's in person. October 5th, Tris Sullivan, walking tour, noise, paint, and death, art and music in the village, 1968 to 89. September 11th, uh, I and Kevin Lawrence worked on various programs to commemorate 20th anniversary of 9-11. And we want to thank Silverstein Properties for all of their generosity. And uh, Ed Welter, who was our guide for the walks and the class. September 11th, Mary Todd Lincoln, shopping tour, when Soho was Lady Smile with John Semlick. I went on that one and uh, it was really fascinating. So that's it for education. Stay tuned for more. Any questions for the education committee? Andrew? Um, can we require tour guides to be fully vaccinated if they're going to get a fan for it? <laughs> That is a debate that uh, that's something that the board has discussed, and on, and we reached the, con the conclusion that we cannot make that as a requirement. We can strongly encourage it, and we can ask only ask guides to um, if you are uncomfortable with a guide who you think may not be vaccinated to speak to that guide personally. Um, that's why we also have the rule that for in-person events and for in indoor events that everyone uh, must be vaccinated when they're indoors. So it's a 30% indoors. And I can promise you that we went back and forth and forth and back about this. And um, it's, it's a really big issue. We don't want to put guides on the spot. We also understand how other guides feel and how, um, you know, I, I'm not going to get into all the different layers of it, but it is something we have seriously, seriously considered and we have weighed every different aspect. and. We, the policy that we made thus far today, everyone to be vaccinated, fill in the form, and we follow what the venues require. Uh, when it comes to outdoor walking tours, uh, you know, people can wear, can be masked if they're with a guy who, who is not vaccinated. You can ask that guy to make sure that he or wears their mask at all times. Um, and those guys who are not vaccinated cannot do indoor events. They just will, will not be able to do that. They'll not be able to attend those. Um, and that's really all we felt that, that we could do as the board. Um, we, um, and I, all the board members can tell you that this was a very long, very difficult discussion. And we, we tried to take every, every aspect into account. Yeah. yeah. Can it be just on the, the invites when the announcement goes out on a fan tour that the guy is not vaccinated and let, we, let everybody we, decide whether they we can familiar? We can't really give um, anybody's you know, vaccination status like that. That's that's not something that we feel we can do. It's not, it would not be, I mean, it would be like, you know, we, we wouldn't be telling, telling tales on guides. We cannot do that. Can you do the opposite of I am vaccinated? If a guide wants to put in their description that they are fully vaccinated, that is perfectly, that's perfectly up to them. When fan tours are written, descriptions are written, that is written by the, the guide. You know, they, you fill out the form to give a fan tour, it's approved in that description. That's what is put onto the invitation. The education committee, um, you know, they probably will edit for spelling or maybe for length if something's too long. But if a guide wants to put on there that they are fully vaccinated, um, they're very welcome to do so. But we cannot ask guides to disclose, we cannot force guides to disclose their vaccination status. Cindy. I just want to say I was lucky enough to be on Trisha's noise tour. I think this was the second one that was first. It was amazing, but she did start out by saying to her credit that she's vaccinated, but if she does anybody mind if she take her mask off? Yeah. And yeah. the other thing that people should consider, and by the way, I'm for vaccinated. Frankly, I would call the person, but that's me. I'm technically I'm not sure. But not everybody was whether you're vaccinated or not, we can just ask each other, but we were carving up from each other. Nobody had to say it, and we all wore masks. Yeah, that's. 
Yes, thank you, Cindy. So Cindy was just making the comment that on, on Trisha score, she did, you know, let everybody know. And I think that's just part of best practices as a guide. I at the observatory, I do the one-on-one -on -one tours, I do the private tours, and everyone has to be vaccinated to go into the observatory. All staff has to be vaccinated. But I always tell my group, I say, I'm fully vaccinated. I will be using my, wearing my mask the entire time. We encourage guests to keep their mask on the entire time, but be totally open with it. Be open with your guests, be open with your fellow organic um, members. And if you know of guides who have not been vaccinated, all we can do is encourage them to do so, to get vaccinated. And that's really, that's all we can, that's all we can do, okay? All right, so let's move on to our next, um, and thank you very much, Andrew. I know how concerned you are. Um, industry relations, so Bob is gonna be up here. Bob is just like, and he's leaving the board, but we're gonna get as much as we can out of it. Yes, we seem to be glad to have it with So you all look familiar. So anyway, the Industry Relations Committee report, the committee met last night. It was Harvey, myself, and uh, Mike Ramit, who was unable to be here tonight, and also Maggie Brown. Uh, so what we are always looking for are venues. That is an issue. We mentioned it before. But November 3rd, we will be at the St. George Theater in Staten Island. We want to thank Claude Toback, our Staten Island honorary member uh, who has forged those visits for us. December 8th, we will be at the United Palace Theater in Washington Heights. And just make a note that it's the second Wednesday of the month rather than the first. It was based on availability of the venue. I know, Billy, you asked uh, earlier, our meetings, we try to stick to the first Wednesday of the month, but it hasn't been that easy during COVID. So we played around with the dates. Uh, January 5th will be announced, which means we have no idea where we'll be at this point. <laughs> if any of you have any ideas, we try to have an open membership meeting where all the committees will set up tables or something for people who are interested in becoming more familiar with what each committee does. So we're looking for something like a gymnasium. So if any of you have a gymnasium in your house, <laughs> please let us know. February 2nd, we will be at the China Institute. They have reached out to us and they would love to have us and they will have guest speakers. Um, thank you to Harvey, of course, uh, who connected with the Greater Harlem Chamber of Car Commerce. And last week, Mike and Harvey were on a conference call with their leadership. We've extended an invite to them to become a strategic affiliate, and we're hoping that all of that will go through and we'll have more information for you. Also, in addition, thanks to Eileen Rourke, we are connected now with the uh, Times Square Alliance, Ooh, and at some point in the near future, they will be a guest speaker, I believe, in December. They're going to be our guest speaker. And they're also eventually will host the FAM bid as well. Mike is also going to reach out once again to the Madison Avenue bid. Uh, if any of you quite a few years ago were on the bid FAM that he organized, it was really wonderful. And he's going to reach out to them again. So that's it for now. And I'm on no other committees that are <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Oh, question? Yeah. Okay. Who has a question? I have a question. Uh, yes. Wait, because there are people listening from home, yes. so I want you to use the mic. Your request for venues, yes. what, what size group, so that people at home could be thinking well, about what size space? You know, normally, if we were going to be somewhere in Manhattan, and we would expect 80 to 100 people, which is what was happening, prior to COVID. One of our very last live meetings was at the New York Historical uh, Society, and we had 129 people at that meeting. It was the largest number we ever had in the meeting. But tonight we had 38 people registered, and at our September meeting, which was the AGM, we also only had 62 and about 55 showed up. So if you told the venue we need like 50 to 80 people, that would really work. Okay, the camera Okay. Thank you, kids. Susan, my question. Do we pay the venues? As little as we can. Yeah, we pay the venues as little as we can. 
as we can get away with, but we do have a budget set aside for the venues. We will also unlikely have another uh, monthly meeting or two monthly meetings. I think we've set to, um, to have them um, on Zoom again, to have a digital meeting on Zoom. In March, yeah, some, sometimes when it's horrible, we don't want to go outside. We'll do, uh, we'll do a Zoom meeting. We're all really good at that, actually, and I kind of like the just sitting <laughs> in a chair and wearing PJs or yoga pants. All right, so um, anything else for industry relations? We're good? Okay, so next is our membership committee and Derek Chan. His report will be read by Jeremy. All right, so I'm reading this on behalf of Derek Chan, who unfortunately could not attend tonight's meeting. So, membership committee would like to welcome new provisional members Wallace Boyd, Richard Farnsworth, Isabel Garbani, uh, Rain Real, Rosalyn Spider, uh, Louise Villas, and Alex uh, DeBoer. Uh, those are some of our newest provisional yeah. members. Anyone here? Welcome. I may be recognizing you from interviewing on Zoom a few weeks ago. So this is what we all look like in the flesh. We look better on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. All right, we also actually want to welcome a new full member. Uh, Juan Garcia Anel uh, recently upgraded to being a full member. Uh, support, but I just actually want to use this opportunity because we do get a lot of emails about people wondering if you are a provisional member. How uh, do you become a full member? So uh, there are a couple requirements. One, you have to have been a member for at least 12 months. That's condition number one. Condition number two is you have to have attended at least four membership meetings. Um, during the COVID period, when we have been doing virtual meetings on Zoom, we have been checking who's there on the Zoom and have been checking them in. So those have counted um, as long as we see that they're, they're there. Um, so you have to have attended a minimum of four membership meetings. And then the final thing is once you hit your 12 year mark, you've got your four meetings, you have to get two existing full members to write you a letter of recommendation. It doesn't have to be long. It could be three paragraphs. It could be three sentences. Uh, just the full member will write to the membership committee and explains why they think you deserve full voting privileges. So if you're a provisional member, that is what your requirements are. We encourage you to stay active. Uh, finally, the membership committee would like people to know that they are planning an in-person happy hour uh, that will be later this month. Details are forthcoming. Uh, Tony DeSante is planning that on behalf of the committee, and we thank you for that. Uh, finally, membership dues renewal, Susan, will soon be upon us on November 1st. We want to thank everyone here and at home uh, for their continued support of Yannick. If you are New York City tour guide license has lapsed, uh, please note that you will need to reapply before you can renew. Obviously, one of the conditions of membership again is that you must maintain an active tour guide license. Derek has been very good about keeping up on that. Um, and the membership committee will, over the next year, continue to focus on providing value and benefits to members. You can see gannick.org slash benefits to see what all of those are. If you're interested in joining the membership committee or have suggestions about what we could be doing better, uh, email Derek and I at membership at gannick.org. So thank you guys so much. Uh, on November 1st, you'll be getting emails, reminders, and invoices uh, to renew your membership. We hope that you will continue to join us uh, in the coming year. So thank you again so much for all of your support. Any questions, Any questions for Jeremy? No? All right. Um, yeah. I just, wanted, I just wanted to thank you for the reminder about the protocol for canceling and things like that. So that's a good reminder too on the subject. Yeah, yeah and you know, um, we recognize that, we recognize that GANIC has a lot of rules, procedures, and protocols. Um, if you have ever have any questions or concerns about those, you can email either the board or the relevant committee and we're happy to, you know, kind of, one thing I do try to keep in mind as someone uh, who is basically on every committee and serves on the board is that <laughs> we are so deep in the weeds on this stuff. This stuff is just, you know, always at the top of our head, but for the average member, you guys have better things to do than remember all this stuff. So, you know, if you have questions or concerns, ask us, that's one of the main reasons we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so please join. You know, we we do a lot. I like to think we're doing a lot of stuff. We're such a fun um, group.
group, you know, a married band of miscreants, right? Um, actually, I had a friend who just got hit when he got his license to be a tour guide at the observatory. I said, do you know what happens next? Was I join your cult? I'm like, it's not cult. <laughs> so anyway, so please join. Please make sure you renew your membership. Sorry, Pastor. You do not appreciate that. All right. Any <laughs> questions or any new business? Anything? That, yeah. I just want to say thank you to the board oh. during um, the beginning of COVID and up until even now. It was an incredible sense of community and really all of you stepped up above and beyond and I never felt isolated or alone considering how long we were out of work I felt busy and excited and energized from the things that you were promoting the newsletter was fantastic so I just want to say thank you to all of you thank you it was also because you were all at home like what are we going to do now <laughs> so we you know threw our salt into it you know you know it was, it was what we wanted to do, and it was taxing and exhausting, but also very, very satisfying. And just we want to, you know, work for you guys. That's what we do it for. Well, it was really appreciated. All right. Well, thank really. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we always, you know, everybody loves a good review. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Anyone else? All right, then I think we should uh, make a, anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? We adjourn. Okay, second? Second, all right. And wait, I'm going to do this. I forgot last time. We adjourn. <laughs>